Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. You're welcome to the third edition of Inkechi Isigwe Annual Lecture. This is an event that APWEN has put together in honor of engineer Inkechi Isigwe, a fellow of the Nigerian Society of Engineers and the second president of this association, a founding member of this association to honor and celebrate her for our contribution to engineering, not just to the female folks, but the engineering body. She's also a past vice president of the Nigerian Society of Engineers. That's to tell you that this woman, even with her level of involvement, she is not relenting. I'd like to welcome everyone that is here physically and those online to this event. I'd like to do a brief housekeeping for those of us that are using online. That's the Zoom application. All participants' mic are automatically muted when you join the meeting. In case when you join your mic is on, please mute it. Please ask questions using the chat feature on Zoom. Kindly use the raise and feature to get the host attention during the session. We appreciate your feedback. Please send via email to info at appwen.org. And for those of us that are here present, there are two, there are three entrants into this hall. One of it is just right here, and there is another one by the back. Two of those doors are open. We don't envisage any drill or any issue, but in case there is an emergency, please do not rush out. Stay cool and calm and wait for instructions so we'll know where to muster, either to muster in or to muster out. For convenience, when you go out through the door, for me, it's by my right, so you, it could be by your left. When you step out, you go down the hall, the ladies' convenience is right on the ground floor. Why for the men, you need to go to the first floor. If there is any other safety precautions we need to observe, it will be communicated. Try as much as possible to maintain the safety distance for COVID-19. Use your face mask if not speaking. Even when speaking, you can still use your face mask if you are close by people. You are all welcome to this event. On that note, and with the approval, of the chairman of this occasion and the president of Association of Professional Women Engineers of Nigeria, Engineer Fumilola Ojelade, a fellow of the Nigerian Society of Engineers. We will start this event with the national anthem, first standard of the national anthem, and we we'll recite the second standard as our opening prayer. Thank you. Second standard, we recite it as our opening prayer. O God of creation, direct our noble course, guide our leaders aright, help our youth the truth to know, in love and honesty to grow, and live in just and truth, great lofty eyes attain, to build a nation where peace and justice shall reign. Amen. You're welcome.
I'd like to believe that the chairman of this occasion, the chairman of this occasion, engineer Baba Ghana Mohammed, FNSC, the president of the Nigerian Society of Engineers is online. If not, I believe he will join us and a representative will join us. I'd like to set the protocol for this event. The chairman of this occasion, engineer Baba Ghana Mohammed, a fellow of Nigerian Society of Engineers, president of Nigerian Society of Engineers, the six founding members of our great association of which our honorary today, engineer Inkechi Isigwe is amongst them. Our distinguished guest speakers, the past presidents of the Nigerian Society of Engineers and Association of Professional Women Engineers of Nigeria present, national executive members and of APWEN and NSC, APWEN and NSC chapter chairman, Gentlemen and women of the press, ladies and gentlemen, you're all welcome to this occasion. It gives me a great privilege to be part of this event that celebrates a woman that is part of what engineering is today. I'd like to say something briefly, which I told her today, that even at our age and with our involvement in engineering for over, I'm 42, so I'm sure she's She's been involved even before I was given birth to. I'll tell you that for almost every engagement or every event of happening that I'm involved in or I moderate, she consciously or unconsciously sends me a feedback. She uses what they call in public speaking, correct, comment, correct. Comment, she will commend you, she will correct, then she will commend you again to boost your ego in case the correction has brought down your hair goal. On this note, publicly, I want to appreciate you, Engineer Kechi Isigwe, FNSC, for looking out for those of us that are coming up and for giving us feedback every time. Thank you very much for doing that for us, Ma. On that note, I'd like to welcome the number one female engineering citizen in Nigeria. You can't doubt that the president of Association of Professional Women Engineers of Nigeria, engineer Fumi Lola Ojelade, FNSE, as she gives a welcome address for this event. Thank you, engineer Bosede, the super toastmaster. The chairman of this occasion, engineer Baba Ghana Mohammed, FNSE, President, the Nigerian Society of Engineers, the six founding members of our great association, the honoree of today's event, Engineer Nkechinyere Sigwe, FNSC, who is also a founding member and the second president of APWEN, our distinguished guest speakers, past presidents of NSC and APWEN here present, national executive committee members of APWEN and NSC here present, APWEN and NSC chapter chairman, gentlemen and women of the press, ladies and gentlemen. I welcome you all to the third edition of our annual Nkechi Nyere Isigwe annual lecture. This lecture serves several purposes. First, it is to honor one of the founding members of our great association, who also served as the second president of APWEN, engineer Nkechiyer Isigwe, FNSC. Secondly, this lecture helps us to fulfill our mandate as an educational organization through knowledgeable guest speakers who make presentations to educate the public on topical issues. Finally, the lecture, until recently, served to fulfill one of the requirements for the NSC group dynamics, which is for every NSC division to hold two public lectures in a year. Although APWEN has now been declared a special division of the NSC, and exempted from the group dynamics criteria. 
we recognize NSE's group dynamics as a well thought out process to help divisions and branches remain active and impact the society in positive ways. We will therefore continue to hold this lecture, group dynamics or no group dynamics. The theme for this year's public lecture is capacity building. It is a subject that is very dear to the heart of today's honorary engineer Nkechi Sigwe, who passionately desires to see others, especially the younger ones, be the best they can be. That should tell you something about Upwind's educational programs in encouraging the girl child to become engineers. We are living the vision of our founding mothers. Today, we have three guest speakers, entrepreneurs, relatively young people who run their own businesses. They will be speaking to us on capacity building in their respective fields. This promises to be an interesting lecture session. I encourage everyone to be attentive and make this a very good use of their time. Once again, I welcome you all, and I thank you for being part of this great occasion. Thank you. Thank you very much, my president for delivering this welcome address that I believe will give an insight into what this annual public lecture is all about, most especially for those that are guests that has never been part of this annual lecture. Allow me to briefly recognize the immediate past president of this association, engineer Dr. Felicia Agubata, FNSC, she's online. Part of our elders, engineer Uwakaego Ojuku, Engineer Beatrice Oduniyi, we recognize you. At the Vice President of our Association, Engineer Dr. Elizabeth Eterigo, FNSC, we, we recognize you. Engineer Dr. Otuaro Ebiere, FNSC, we recognize you. And I believe as people join us online or physically, we would appreciate and recognize them. You're all welcome. For the chairman's address, the, that's the address from the president of Nigerian Society of Engineers, Engineer Baba Ghana Mohammed FNSC. We would, we would hold on on that till we see is representative or we get an information of when it will join us. Yes. So, I would like us to go in straight into the crux of this public lecture, which is we have three guest lecturers that will be delivering their lectures today. In no particular order, as already said by our presidents, we will bring them on board. Allow me to start with one of them who is physically here, a very good colleague, a very good friend, a passionate engineer, so I'm not surprised you're here and part of this. Engineer Austin Duru, founder Modulus Technology. Engineer Austin Duru is an electrical and electronics engineer. He is an entrepreneur, consultant, researcher, philanthropist, nation builder, and a thinking doer. He is the MD, CEO, and principal consultant at Modulus Technologies Limited, an ICT consulting and energy service firm located in Lagos, Nigeria. His career spans two decades experience at Airtel Networks, MTN Nigeria, and Telnet. He leads the team at Givers Educational Foundation with goal to provide STEM textbooks for basic school students, Engineer Austin Duru is an avid volunteer for good courses with maverick style pragmatism about engineering in Nigeria. I'd like to welcome engineer Austin Duru as he presents the first lecture for this public lecture. You're welcome.
Thank you. Thank you all, and uh, congratulations, Apwen, for for this event that you that you put together, and congratulations to the honoree. Uh, I'm indeed honored to uh, be one of the speakers today. Um, Okay, we'll just wait for the slide to come up and then we can start our discussion. Thank you, um, moderator. So this, the discussion today is on capacity building. Uh, I mean, someone will be scrolling, right? Okay. I've been told that I have only 15 minutes, so I'll try to make it snappy. Um, capacity building, sometimes interchange with capacity development has become a somewhat um, household term and indeed for developing nations like Nigeria. Basically, we would just run through what the international community thinks about it. It's actually part of Sustainable Development Goal uh, 17, which focuses on human capacity and ensuring that people have, you know, good life. Uh, can you go to the next slide? So here we are looking at what is capacity building uh, and probably to look at the scope also. It is indeed seen as a process by which individuals, which is persons, people, and organizations learn, obtain, utilize, improve, and retain and manage the skills and knowledge, tools, equipment, finance, and resources that they need to do their, their work or whatever. Okay. So, so it is basically the process of obtaining knowledge and also is a process of obtaining knowledge and also uh, using that knowledge, managing it to do our work competently. People, organization, countries, and all that. This is uh, what capacity building is about. However, because it's doesn't just deal with individuals. There are multiple levels. So capacity building from the individual level in terms of communities, states, countries, organization, you know, it goes to a higher level and also uh, to the uh, global stage. So in other words, people generally talk about capacity development in terms of you know, the level where they are operating. For instance, you can say Nigeria has the capacity to do ABC. Apwen has the capacity to do this lecture or that lecture and, and all that. So uh, it, it is indeed an important uh, resolve. Next, we look at the domains of capacity building, the human part of it, human resource, which is to deal with people, institutional, like I mentioned, and indeed, we look at partnerships and, and networks, how people uh, build upon what, you know, the synergy that they have. And foremost, already the WHO World Health Organization and UNDP has done substantial work on that. If you look 
in the Venn diagram, we can see there, we can see that uh, most, most of the times we have to, you know, keep looking at what, what we get from capacity building uh, processes, the lessons, the learners, instructors, and, you know, what, what, we, what we come out of it, in, especially when uh, outcome or output is expected to grow our knowledge area. Uh, next, let's see the next slide, which is purely talking about how the SDG seven, number 17 intends to uh, solve capacity uh, development issues. And first, it focuses on people. We have to realize that any capacity development or capacity building initiatives that are not focused on people is definitely uh, out of place. So the, the point is that people must realize their full potential after going through a capacity building process. And indeed, it should be sustainable because again, um, you, we know about the UN SDG goals, they are meant to be sustainable, which means the people themselves who you are trying to train are the ones that have to keep running it to make sure that you know, collectively uh, they, you know, they, they make it work and for their benefit. So uh, with that, we'll look now at what Nigeria is doing. Yeah, so of course, uh, let me put it this way that um, Nigeria started its capacity building drive from the local content perspective. How to ensure that, how to ensure that um, the oil industry in Nigeria, which before the time, when we are around 2005, was, uh, was being driven wholly, you know, from start to finish by foreign organizations. And so Nigeria thought of it that we need to start building local capacity. That is a foremost uh, idea coming from the oil and gas industry and leading up to the Local Content Act that created the Nigerian Content Development and Management Board. And so this unit is charged as of today with local capacity building. And that's why we try to reflect here what exactly, uh, how they exactly do that. We have a couple of slides addressing that. Uh, companies, helping local companies to build capacities, helping human, you know, people who work in the oil industry to build capacities, and also uh, capabilities that would help them carry on, including funding as well. So it's, it's not just about skills, but also about other resources. Next slide. And to do that, they have a division anyway, which in the NCDMB focuses on that capacity development and building. And they do that through a number of mechanisms. One is what they call direct intervention, uh, where they sponsor trainings you know, and, and manage people through that so that at the end of the day, uh, we build skills, including people who are working in the oil industry and those that are coming into the field, you know, and, and that program is one of the ways to ensure that knowledge is passed from, let me call it foreign partners and the experts, okay, who, who come to Nigeria to work to local resource, as well as trainings and, you know, uh, programs that are done outside the country. They also do project-based capacity development, uh, in, and which means uh, when you are given a project, it, there will also be expectation that you recruit some Nigerians and let them work with the experts, and then we have an on-the-job transfer, uh, on-the-job knowledge transfer, as well as training that may not be local, maybe foreign training for participants in that project. Also, the NCDB does others, collaborative and remedial. Remedial being that if a, if a company is not measuring up what the NCDB has to do, 
to ensure that they measure up. The next slide, please. We talks about the budget. Uh, so one of the things that the NCDMB or Nigeria tries to do is to ensure that human capacity development budget is defined and follows strictly for different uh, range of project in terms of value. So if you have uh, a project that is awarded to you up to say uh, 500 million uh, naira uh, dollars, you should spend not less than 1% for training of the people, you know, the contract or the service providers as well. So uh, in a number of times, a number of times, maybe this works, but I'm not very sure that uh, it is 100% working, but at least it is defined, so it can always be called up and checked. Now, coming down to next, coming down to the um, local bodies like our associations of engineers, uh, where I play active role, we also have uh, human capacity development initiative. So what we've shown from NCDMB is basically what the country is doing. So coming home to associations, I also know that there are a lot of trainings that APOEN does. There are a lot of trainings at NSC, which is Nigerian Society of Engineers, particularly our Victoria Island branch, where I belong, does. And some, some of them are for skilled acquisition, while others are basically to transfer uh, knowledge that are not hands-on skill, but they require um, some mental ability. And, and so the knowledge has to be passed for younger engineers to pick up and use to thrive. Maybe get a new job, maybe sometimes do well in their job and all that kind of training. And these are you know, of different types. In, in, in the local environment, it could be public lectures, it could be focus group where discussions continue to happen. It could be workshops. Sometimes it is also uh, just uh, knowledge sharing by an expert. So these uh, initiatives are there to ensure that knowledge is transferred, skills are transferred from persons to persons to ensure that um, we retain them and we use them and manage them for the future generation. Next. So I'm also aware that because of the talk from the engineering perspective of outcome-based engineering education, there is a clamor by industry experts, including some people in the academia, to have more participation of industry people in academics. Why is that so? Because academics without knowledge of how to apply it in the industry or how it is going to be used in the industry is a waste. Sometimes some people say that Nigerian graduates of recent times are half-baked because when you employ them, they are not able to understand even basic terminologies that apply to the industry. So how to solve it is to form a collaboration between the industry and the universities such that knowledge can be passed by industry champions to undergraduates so that when they graduate and come into the industry, they are already aware of some of the techn terminologies, tools, and also processes that apply in the industry. So, I mean, a lot of people come out and they don't understand this and it's, it's hurtful to the industry because you have to spend more time to train them before they become uh, productive and useful. Next slide, please, uh, which is basically to talk specifically about what the ICT industry, which, is, which happens to be my industry, what, we, what happens. There are quite a lot of capacity building initiatives, but I'll just, I've just focused on one that is known the MTN Foundation. While this organization is running this as a CSR, it is also uh, impacting you know, the society to a very you know, uh, great extent. The reason being that 
we all know they talk about digital skills. We know the, the, the fact that the ICT industry has remained the, the only industry that has been in growth in terms of uh, contribution to the GDP for the past 10, 15 years, even when we're in a recession. And even during the COVID-19 uh, pandemic era. So it makes a lot of sense when the telecom giant like MTM partners with the likes of KPMG, Oracle, and Digital Bridge Institute to pass on knowledge, technical skills to our younger generation, along with uh, business skills. And that's what MTN did in the year 2018 when they trained about 500 persons in the burden and repeated the same in Kano this year in their phase two. So um, it is our hope and belief that MTN will continue in this path because it is much better than any other thing. And finally, I'll go to what um, my organization does. We, we are a small company, but we see ourselves as a training ground. And most times uh, our people, you know, when we, when we get people into our fold, it is basically to pass knowledge to them. We see uh, the platform, we provide our platform for people to learn, pass knowledge to them, and push them forth to the next level. Yeah, because, of course, when a young engineer is hired and his pay is not rising after two, three years, the next thing is he wants to move to the next level. So we are that uh, stepping stone most times. We try to recruit, train, and develop people to retain their, to, to use their knowledge and move to the next level. And particularly over the past decade, because we are a you know, consulting firm, um, we have provided a platform for not less than 200 uh, technicians and technologists as well as a few engineers. And some of them, after training, they move on to bigger organizations. In fact, we have not less than five persons who have passed through our organization in MTN and not less than three other persons in Airtel, Glow, and, and the others. Because why? Why do we do this? Why did we set up that platform? It is basically to build capacity, nothing more. It's not that we are building a brand that will be known as rich. We are building a brand that people can come learn and use that knowledge to move to higher role. And, and that makes us proud. That is one of the things that we you know, pride ourselves upon and we'll continue to do that. And I do hope that many, many um, small companies will also see this idea of grooming people, even though it might look like attrition because people will come and after two years they leave. But I don't see it as attrition. Rather, I see it as grooming them for the next level. And I, I'm, th I'm thinking I've exhausted my 15 minutes. So we'll just look at, please, the next, the last slide. Um, here, I would uh, like us, participants, both physically here and those that are uh, online, to suggest how our country will uh, continue to build capacity. How do we improve? Because as we all know, there are 200 million of us and at least, at least 120 million do not have formal jobs, which means they are in the informal sector. Many of them, up to a half, 60 million of that number, do not have any skill. So it, the, the onus is on us. Those of us who are playing at in a, a higher level, the onus is on us to think out how we are going to train these, call it 60 million youths, so that they will become productive and they will help to build our nation of continue from where uh, some of us have got to and make our nation much better. I would like to throw it out to the, to the forum. People can write, you can write on the chat box uh, your suggestion on how you think we can improve capacity building across Nigeria. And think about it, it must be transformational. So you can't train somebody if you're not, 
if the person is not transformed, then the capacity building initiative have failed. So anything we are thinking of must ensure that we must have at the back of our mind that it should transform the youth from where they are, which we know many of them are driven by, and if there are a lot of youth there, please don't be annoyed, they are driven by entitlement syndrome, and we need that to change. Youths have to acquire skills, and so they can become productive and move the nation forward. Uh, with that, I will say thank you so much for, for this, and I do hope that um, we engage for more, even on the virtual forum. Thank you very much, Austin Duru. One of the things that struck me most from what you said is, and it's not generally said by most employers of labor, when you build the capacity of your personnel and they leave you, it's not usually, sometimes it's not a sweet story to say, but when I see an employer of labor says that he's happy that people that pass through them move into other bigger company. That's quite commendable. And working towards the fulfillment and making sure that the SDG goals are being met with what you do is also what we need to applaud you for. Thank you very much for that delivery. Appoint appreciates you and I'm sure that Engineer Inkechi Isigwe, FNSE, also appreciates you. I'd like to recognize the presence of the chairman of this occasion, who is online now, our president, and the chairman in council of the Nigerian Society of Engineers, Engineer Baba Ghana Muhammad. I will be calling him for his welcome address, but because, before I do that, I'm sure that we all know that if it's a fully physical event, we'd have had a series of photo shots during the occasion. But you know the beauty of digitalizing um, information is even with the app we're using, we can still have a photo shoot. So I'd like to appeal to most viewers as much as possible, if you're sure of the decency of your video, please, can we have all our videos on? We're going to take the first shot. This is going to be the first testimonial that will vet that you are part of this event. So please, I'll give you time to enable your video. Then we'll take a shot. While we're trying to do that, I'd like to recognize Pastor Alauma Isigwe, she is a sister to the celebrant of today, Engineer Inkechi Isigwe, so she's not here alone. I'd also like to recognize Mr. Dala Nandat. I hope I call that right. He's a former colleague of Engineer Inkechi Isigwe. These are the co-NMPC retirees. They just decided not to leave themselves. Don't worry, we'll make Nigeria proud even after you've all left NMPC. So please, can we have our videos on? Don't worry, you don't need to know who the cameraman is. This is virtual. Once I know we've taken adequate shots, then we'll move to the next program. I know her second guest lecturer is been here from the beginning of the program. We recognize you, Oneye Gio. Let me make sure that I call it right. Oneye Fori, Stephen George. I've been trying to call this name since yesterday. Is online with us. Thank you for joining us. Engineer Valerie Agberagba, FNSC past president of this association, we recognize you. Engineer Dr. Patricia Okwene Odili, FNSC, we recognize you. 
I saw a name, Joanna. I want to assume that that is the founder and the first president of this association, engineer Mrs. Olutumbi Joanna Maduka, FNSC. I hope she's the one. If not, we also recognize her. Engineer Fumilayo Kadri, one of the six women that founded this association. She's here present physically, FNSC. We recognize you, Ma. She's also the chairman of this occasion. Thank you for putting of the committee of the, the planning committee of this occasion. My apologies. Yes, the chairman of the planning committee of this occasion. Thank you for putting this together on behalf of Appoint. So I believe now we've taken our shot. So allow me to invite my own president, the number one engineering citizen in Nigeria, engineer Babagana Mohammed, FNSC, the president of the Nigerian Society of Engineers, as it delivers his chairman's address. You're welcome, sir. You can unmute yourself and speak, sir. Thank you very much. Thank you, everyone. Thank you, everyone. Thank you, everyone. Here we are again, up when. This time around, in Kechisigwe, team capacity building. Very apt. I wish to have read a very formal speech, but because today I'm in Meduguri, Today, I'm in Meduguri, and I'm about seeing His Excellency. And when I told him I'm going to join Apwen, he said, for me, I've not invited him. For me, over to you. For me, over to you. My president. My president. The governor said you have not invited him to join this program. And you have not extended your greeting to him. But I said you have you have given me a bunch of greeting to bring to him. Am I right? Yes, sir. He is listening to you. It's better you say it so that you are correct, he sir. Is going to The network is misbehaving. So let me wish let me wish this for you are an automatic, you are an autonomous, you are an automatic member, sir. Thank you. So let me wish this forum and this Don't exercise any form. a very fruitful discussion. Capacity building is key in Nigeria, and it should be a deliberate policy by government to build capacity. Capacities are not built just overnight, or you just wake up and think. We have capacity. No, capacities are built deliberately. Other clients or our contemporaries, where we came from, if you look at their background, they build capacity deliberately. And Nigeria cannot be an exception. So, government must, as a matter of policy, as a matter of policy, I repeat, must develop capacity deliberately. How? What in every work? there must be that Nigerian engineering component. It should be deliberate, not only pro pronouncement, but it should be monitored and measured. It has to be implemented, has to be monitored, and has to be measured. These are key. So going forward, I want to wish all of you a very successful deliberation and wish in Kechi Sigwe now, how do I address her? My boss, my NFC award, and my board of trustee member. This is one thing I don't hear you calling. You kept saying, in Kechizuke, past president of, of Apuyen. You are not calling, she was one time vice president. You are not calling that. And you are not mentioning that she's a member of the board of trustee of NAC. You mentioned Patricia Odeni Opeli, FNNC, past president of Afwin, you stop. You forgot she's a 
board member of the board of trustee of NAC. You just address Valerie Aguereba, one of the past president of Apwin. You forgot she was the immediate past chair of women in engineering, WFEO. Please state the protocols very right. It adds value. So on this note, I want to thank all of you for coming and wish this meeting a very successful deliberation. Upwind, keep doing what you are doing. Keep doing what you are doing. We'll stand behind and support you. God bless you all. Thank you. Thank you very much, sir. So let me take to correction. I have no choice if I still want to be practicing my engineering. So let me start with engineer in Kechi in Sibwe. I remember that I mentioned uh, as past vice president of the Nigerian Society of Engineers. So what did, I did not mention is she's a board of trustee member, Nigerian Society of Engineers. Engineer Valerie Agberagba, FNSC, a three-time vice president of the Nigerian Society of Engineers. She's also the immediate past chairman of women in engineering. The World Federation of Engineering Organization. I'd also like to reintroduce engineer Dr. Patricia Opene Odili, FNSC who is also a board of trustee member of the Nigerian Society of Engineers. I would take more corrections of every other person I've recognized and introduced. I can't be too familiar with these great women and men that have spread this path of engineering before we came on board. Allow me to also, one of the things we decided during the council meeting of our great association is at every of our events, we remind ourselves of why we're here together, why we're championing this course of Hapwen. The vision of Hapwen is to be the catalyst for advancement of women in engineering profession towards national and global technological development. How do we intend to achieve this vision? We have some set aside mission that will guide us to, uh, towards achieving this. Three of them, starting with to continuously increase awareness that engineering is also a career for girls, thereby improving the strength and the strength of female engineers. And that's one of the things we're doing today. We are creating more awareness on capacity, capacity development available capacity that everyone needs to need, needs to have as an engineer. To increase women to achieve professional excellence as engineers as, and leaders, it also connotes what we're doing today. Engineer Inkechi is being honored and celebrated today because she has gone ahead to achieve professional excellence as an engineer and as a leader of several engineering bodies. Third, to promote the engineering profession as a positive force in enhancing the quality of life. This event also connotes it. You all agree with me that when you have the adequate capacity required to do any task, any obligation, either personally or professionally, you would have an improved quality of life. On that note, I'd like to call our second speaker. I want to believe is ready for us. I'll read his brief profile. Onegye Ofori, Stephen George, is a graduate of applied computing from Nottingham University, Newcastle, United Kingdom. He is the co-founder and CEO of Rework Technologies Limited and Rework Academy. He has great passion for skills development in tech and has been developing high tech skills for over eight years. I believe Stephen George is ready for us. Please 
unmute your mic and do your lecture. Thank you. Thank you so much. Can you hear me? Yes, we can hear you. Okay, thank you so much uh, for this opportunity. I will want to first of all um, thank Apwen for this opportunity given to me to speak. And also to also thank um, Engineer Keji Sigui, who has been a wonderful person. And um, we've had a lot of discussions on skills development and so many things. And in all of our discussion, you could see from our own point of view that skills need to be developed. And, need to be developed. and through that, we, we've had a lot of discussion. And I, I, kept, I kept telling her that we can do more in terms of skill development. And I told her, give the Nigerian youth 10 years and we'll do much more. And man, we are still counting, I'm still counting more. And just to assure you that for some of us that you affected our lives, we are still awake at night, still burning those candles, trying to see what we can put in to make sure that the nation feels our impact, just like you always discuss about. Okay. I'll share my presentation now, sorry. You can go ahead and share. Yes, that's what I'm working on. Thank you. $210. Now, that means that productivity feels a bit low. And if we have to measure our GDP on productivity, rather that South Africa has a better GDP than us in, in terms of that. But what I'm saying is, what I'm saying is, is this, we have to be more productive. We have to be able to pick up skills that makes us more productive. And coding is one skill that helps us achieve more faster. And if Nigeria has to move forward, if economy has to move a lot forward, we have to look at how we implement codes into this, into everything that we do. Over 60% of our industry still needs to be automated. Over 60% of our industry still needs to be automated. And the, these skills are needed to automate these industries so that we can move further, we can move forward. And most of us sitting are mostly women. The thing is we, we've got to realize that uh, most times you talk to young ladies and say, this is where we need to do, this is what we need to do, this we need to grow. And they say, no, I'm a lady. And I just, not to advertise anybody, not to, not to promote any company there, or no, no, not at all, but just to charge our young ladies that we need women in tech. We need women engineers in tech. See, we, women need to come on board. There are certain ideas that come from women that men can actually put out there. There are certain core ideas that women can push for that, that men can push that that far. Women need to come on board and bring their intelligence on board. I keep telling people the most intelligent persons ever to exist on earth are women, and because they can handle more things than men. But men try to raise their head for that because of how much how, how tenacious they are, how, 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 because of tenacity. And women can do more. They are far more intelligent. They can actually do more. So we need more women in tech. We need more women to begin to learn to code. And if you're an engineering woman, if you're a young person listening to this right now, begin to understand that. There are a lot of opportunities for women in tech. And women need to come because companies, are, NGOs, companies are looking for women who can actually handle tech and go into tech fully. You can do it as a woman in tech, okay? Now, there is need for us to skill up and learn to code. And if we must, let's look at this. Unemployment is on the rise. We need to create more jobs. Now, this will help us create more jobs. This will help us generate ideas that will create jobs. Because we need to, Take in, and this is why a country like France is putting over five billion. Country like uh, France put over five billion, uh, five billion euros just to see how they can um, handle talent, building up talent and skills. And we need to grow in terms of this, and we need to create more jobs. Now we also seen, I've seen, I've 
Someone just raised their hand. Um, moderator, am I, am I uh, allowed to answer that question? Uh, moderator. No, please. All <laughs> questions will be placed in the chat box. Okay, okay, thank yes. you. But if you are able to take some as you're speaking, if it does not distract you while doing your presentation, you can handle them together. Well, all okay. questions should be placed in the chat box. Thank you. Okay, thank you so much. Um, so the, the next point is reduce income, household income inflow, which we are seeing because of the pandemic. We've seen a lot of um, lot of persons lost their job. We've seen a lot of salaries being cut up to um, up to seventy five percent being cut off from the salary. And we, for us to actually bring all of this back to where we are, where things are supposed to be, and where and grow beyond, we need to start creating global opportunities. We need to begin to create ideas, solutions that will attract global global interactions, like people from around the world trying to bring the funds in from outside through ideas and let them come in to actually build the nation as a whole. Now, another thing again, you can see from every, everything, you can see that oil is failing. Oil is failing and we need to replace. We need, we, we need to diversify. We need to actually diversify the economy. And if oil is failing, now we need to diversify very fast. Agriculture needs to be diversified and engineering needs to be diversified. Everything needs to be diversified. We need tech to move, to push the diversification and make it grow very fast. We need to do that. And learning to code will help us. If we have more persons coding, if we have more persons writing core, core codes, not just, not just trying to, just just minor website, but core codes, writing algorithms and core AI solutions, we found out that we can actually take over most of the things that oil is doing for us. Skills is the only way, education is what we need to actually take us further. And I've said that from the very beginning, from the moment I started teaching, I said, education is what we need as a country to take us further. And then the benefit of scaling up is, 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 is enormous. And one of them is it gives us, the young people, it gives us, every one of us, the ability to compete globally. The line of code you learn today is applicable anywhere in the world. You can compete globally because today it's more of a global economy. It's more of a global economy where um, someone puts up a job opportunity here, someone from India, someone from China, someone from the US and UK who decide to apply, can apply and also compete for the same job. So it's no longer just me being on my own. I say, okay, I know this. No, it is you versus the world. So that means if we learn core skills like coding, it helps us compete globally. It also brings in better opportunities, better employment opportunities for every one of us. People that it's just most of them choose what they, what they want to earn, where they want to work because of the kind of skills they have. Then also job creation, like I said earlier, there are a lot of us seated who have ideas that can create major jobs for us, major jobs, major jobs. We look at people like um, someone like Amazon who, holds, who have over 700,000 employees. And a lot of these, these same things can be replicated. We're seeing Jumia also coming up very fast in terms of their, their, their employee numbers and all of that. A lot of jobs, ideas can be created that can bring in a lot of opportunities for other persons. Now, once we put all of this together, the major benefit that we see is better economy. A much more better economy, that's what we, 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 we start to see. Of course, we've seen that in from the companies and all of that coming over, you see that there is better economy that will go for any nation that is able to push more skills in this, in this direction. So that uh, now, our role in this journey, what do we need to do? First of all, to all of us who, who are here, to the young persons who are here, to the ladies, to the men who are here, skill up, learn to code. Every line of code you write is beneficial to the next person. And as you can see, everything around us is gradually changing to code base. Everything around us is gradually changing. Tech is taking over everything, it's changing everything for us. And we have to be part of that. We have to be part of that particular um, era. Now, we also need, for us as an association, we need to begin to empower and sponsor developers. There are a lot of persons who have the, who want to really go into this, who want to learn this, who want to go into this. but are incapacitated, they don't, know how, they, they don't have the, the, the resources to actually go into these things. They don't have the resources, they don't have, because most times education is kind of expensive. So most time we have as a session, we have to come together and say, okay, how do we sponsor just a, a certain number of persons? How do we sponsor a certain number of persons to go into this area? The other thing again, again that we have to look at is fund ideas. We should start beginning to fund ideas. 
there, there is this fear of, oh, what if, um, what if the person doesn't make it all of that? Learn to fund ideas. The more ideas you fund, the more, the more jobs you create. The more jobs you create, the more ideas you fund, the more jobs you create. There are more foreign investors coming to Nigeria, investing in Nigerian startups and Nigerian ideas, Nigerian tech ideas. We need more Nigerians to actually go into funding more Nigerian ideas. And at Work Academy, which um, I am the major coordinator and the CEO with um, my team, what we do is we are developing highly skilled talent for tech industries. That, that's practically what we do. And we do this through monthly subscription so that the project doesn't go much at anybody. And through income sharing agreement, or a company comes to us and say, we, we, we want you to train this person, but later on we're going to pay the money. That. We do that, we, we go into every kind of partnership that will aid, that will promote skills development, that will promote, help people learn to code. And just like I've learned, I've, I've, I've learned at, the, at the base, we've seen less and ladies opting for coding grants. And surprising, there are, there are a lot of opportunities for women in tech. There are a lot of, so we are, we are calling on more persons to come, women to come into programming, to come into coding and build, and build, we, you can actually build a whole new sector, a whole new economy. We can build an economy that doesn't rely on government and all of that. We can build sectors that run on their own through this. Thank you so much. Um, my name is Onengo Furi, Stephen Judge. I know um, the moderator I've been trying to call that name is Onengo Furi, Stephen Judge. And um, we are open for um, any kind of questions. You can always, whatever I, that you need to ask, even after now, my email is here. Send it over. Check what check out what we do and all of that. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Thank you very much. I think we can, for those that are physically present here, we are applauding you. And those that are online, you can use the virtual applause sign to show that it was a well-delivered lecture. Thank you very much. So I know you you seamlessly called your name. You know it's your name. I can't claim ownership of it. So I, I would also I hope I can't I won't struggle about it, but allow me to just stay with Stephen George. Thank, Thank you very you. much you for that great delivery. I'd like to say that your delivery is very apt and succinct. Not just that, because recently I saw something on LinkedIn and I had to share it on other technological or engineering platform I was. There was an opportunity that the basis for getting that uh, engagement is, is you need to have that skill or capacity to be able to code. And about 25 or 30 people were, advert were showcased on LinkedIn that were engaged by that international organization. It was so shocking that the 30 people were guys. They were men all through. And these are young people. I know I'm not a coder and I'm an engineer and I do more of my physical and hardware engineering thing. But that spoiled me and got me thinking, how come it's only men that were selected or that made this interview? And I followed the thread on LinkedIn with various comments from people saying, where are the women? There should be a gender balance. There should be whatever. But within my mind, I just said, this just, we need to reset our mind. As we're campaigning or championing for gender balance, we also need to position ourselves into acquiring the right skills to get those opportunities. And I believe this connotes what you just delivered. Another thing caught me my attention. You know women, every human being generally, we love money. Everybody likes money, likes money. When you did the analysis about the productivity, so for someone that has worked through all through the year, in Nigeria, the productivity level was equated at $19,000 plus. And for someone in South Africa, $42,000 plus. That's a very glaring difference beyond seven of the difference. That means we need to work on our skills or any other thing we need to do to increase the productivity of our nation. And you also said the future of productivity lies in being able to code or for code to be written. Zoom and the likes of it were apps developed via coding. Most things now, even with the pandemic on ground, are being championed because these people could code. And I will want to reiterate what you said. Pick up a skill that improves your productivity. 
Thank you very much for that delivery. I'd like to go straight to the next presenter. Please place your questions in the chat box. All our guest lecturers, they will be responding to some of them as they can. Those that they are unable to respond to would collate them and send it out based on the registrations of the emails, the registered emails for this public lecture. Our next speaker is one of us. She is Engineer Chioma Okoli Chima. I call her energy. Her energy is just beyond uh, what you can contend with. And sometimes I silence emit that energy. Engineer Chioma Okoli, she is the MD of Olivet Cloud Solutions Nigeria Limited. She is an enterprise solution engineer, presently managing director of Olivet. She has over 18 years experience in software development, digital marketing with vast experience in cloud computing and ERP implementation. She has assisted over 600, 6,000 small and large businesses, educational institutions and government agencies to implement innovative solutions. She helps SMEs in reaching their visions and compete with global brands. She is the founder of SME Business Clinic and sits on the board of many organizations. She is a multi-talented serial entrepreneur and holds numerous technical credentials from Google, Microsoft, SAP, Sage, Zoho, Facebook, Twitter, and Amazon and specializes in consulting and training the entrepreneurs on growing all technologies. Our expertise in aforementioned art technologies with many years of diverse experience as a trusted technical advisor to many companies has enabled many enterprises to adopt more flexible, adaptive, collaborative, and smarter approach to work. She holds a bachelor degree in electronic engineering software from the University of Nigeria, Unsuka, and master in information technology with numerous IT certifications. Engineer Chioma Okoli, please, you have 50 minutes, 15 minutes to deliver your lecture and you are enabled to share your screen. You're welcome. Congratulate Apwen on this platform for this occasion of capacity building of engineering family, especially the female engineers. Engineer Obianuju Okusogo, our own elder, also celebrates engineer Inkechi Isigwe as she's been honored today. And she says, it's a privilege knowing you and thank you for your contributions to the growth of Apwen and engineers. Engineer Fumi Afolayo sends a comment for your brilliant and thought-provoking presentation. That's to Engineer Austin Uduru. Thank you for that brilliant and thought-provoking provoking presentation. All right. So Engineer Chioma Okoli, I know she's trying to change her device to connect with another device. Okay. Engineer Chioma Okoli, please unmute yourself, share your screen, and do your presentation. Thank you. Yeah, hello, good afternoon, everyone. Good afternoon, we can hear you now. Okay, sorry for that technology. I want to all protocol duly observe. I don't know, can you see my screen, please? 
Yeah. yeah. Can you see my screen? It's not you. It's not showing yet. You're just sharing now. Okay. Just share, show it up. share it again, please. Okay, I am. I am. Just say maybe. Okay. Okay, can you see this the slides now? Yes, we can see your screen now. You're yeah, good. Okay. Thank you very much, and thank you for that uh, this opportunity to present today. This afternoon, I'm going to be speaking on enhanced capacity building and the uh, contribution to manpower development using ICT. I've been asked to speak on what is capacity building, key drivers causing the change in the ICT industry where I serve over the years. Digital skills and online opportunity that will help position us for the future. And I share the resources link. I would like to start with this very quote. Tagra says that everything that comes to us, everything that comes to us belongs to us if we create the capacity to receive it. So we'll find that it's all about the capacity we create that can help us to be able to grow. It's often say that if we can be able to, if we can be able to create the capacity in actual area of our life, develop the skills in that area of our life, enhance our skills, in a particular area of our life, that area of our life will begin to grow. Capacity building most often is an aspect of growth for organization, for institute, even for nation. Capacity building can be seen in different area. It's all about increase in our knowledge, our output, our managerial skills, our capability. So if we begin to define capacity building or being able to grow, we'll look at what are those areas of things or requirements that we need in order to build capacity. For us to grow in engineering, in ICT, in any area of our life whereby we require capacity. One is that there must be interest, interest, interest. If you don't have interest in that area where you require capacity or you want to grow capacity, it will be difficult to go that journey. So requirements for capacity building, as we are honoring the engineer IC way today, one is that we must have interest, interest. And Tosazim must be there. Like uh, George made mention of coding. If there is no interest in coding and you want to build capacity in that area, you will see that down the line, you will drop off the way. So the first thing is interest. The second thing is then Tosazim. You cannot go for training in that area and we'll be able to access several resources. I will be talking capacity development with respect to the software market. Being that I've been in an ICT world for the last 20 years, I took out time to look about the global digital marketing software market, the value as of last year, and the expected CAGR from 2020 to 2027, you will see the digital shift. And I'm going to relate it again 
looking at what the pandemic has left us with. This to help everyone, those that have lost their job, those that are looking at improving their lives, women, especially, women, especially, to see areas that they can grow capacity or grow skill. When we are looking at the global digital marketing software, you will see areas whereby that the pandemic has created opportunity. You will see the rise in CRM software. People now want to have software that can give them their customer insights, both those coming online, both those coming from the Facebook, both those coming from the manual system, both those coming from calling the phone, everything being integrated. You will see the high rise when it comes to CRM software. Email marketing also has grown. The social media has helped a lot of business in this time of pandemic. Search engine marketing, I'm talking about the software market, the ICT where I found strength over the years. Content marketing, do you write well? That's another field that you keep seeing that content developers are needed everywhere. Marketing automation. People now want to automate their marketing processes. These areas are areas that receive high. You can see the graph, the projection, meaning there are so much opportunity in these areas. So for Engineer Chioma, if you can hear me, we've lost you. We can only see your slide, but we can't hear anything from you. If you can hear me, we've lost you. We can only see your last slide, but we can't hear anything. is what's to be shown you're what you're willing to show your video kindly have your video on so we can take another snapshot please have your video on so we can take another snapshot with the permission of the president once we do that we'll take one or two questions if we have any then we move to the goodwill messages. Please enable your video. Smile. Give us one of the awarding smiles. A smile that celebrates engineer Inkechi Isigwe, FNSC, for our contribution to the development of capacity, of capacity in Nigeria. Please enable your video. We'll take the snapshots. Please, we need more people to have the video enabled. More people to have the video enabled. I'd like to recognize the chairman of NSC, Ikot Ekbene, engineer Isin. I hope I got the name right. We recognize you. Thank you for joining us. 
Yes, engineer SCN. Thank you for joining us. So I'm sure the picture session is over. Thank you. So we'll go to the goodwill messages with the approval of the president. Please, can I start with our president, the president of NSC, engineer Baba Ghana Mohammed, FNSC and chairman and council, as he gives a goodwill message. We'll take four, we'll take one to two minutes each, and we move to the next agenda, which is cutting of the cake. My president, sir. Okay. So if while waiting for him, if he's not online, again, we'll call on engineer Mrs. Olutumbi Johanna Maduka, FNSE. The one of the found the founder and first president of the Niger of Association of Professional Women Engineers of Nigeria. Oh. Allow me to call with that title only. If I start to reel out all the other titles, we may not leave here. One of the days I was reading through our profile, I had that, that you have taken the first of almost everything. How are we going to create the first, those generations after you? Then I looked at her and smiled again. Okay, I've seen a first that I've carved a niche for myself. I will display it when I have my profile to showcase again. Engineer Joanna Olutumbi Madukama, please, your goodwill message. You can unmute yourself. Good afternoon, uh, ladies. I'm very happy to be here. Bosse, I'm sure there are still a lot of uh, firsts that people can be. And uh, Unkechi, the celebrant of today, congratulations. It's always a pleasure to be here. We started this journey together and we've had uh, ups and downs, successes and failures and so on. But all in all, I think we thank God for where we are today. I must congratulate our president, Kulala Ojelaje. I think she's doing a bit too much. She's really, really moving. Every time I open any of the chats, I have so many messages from one branch to the other, from one uh, system to the other that I always ask her, how do you manage with your job? And I think she's had to take a special permission from her normal job to be able to attend to Upwind. I think we had to do the same with the immediate uh, past president. We thank God for your lives. We always pray for you, those of us who can't uh, move around much anymore. I would have liked to, to be physically with you, but we've been told because of COVID that some of us in a certain age bracket should um, observe some protocols. And it looks like the older you are, the more strict you have to be with yourself. So Nkechi, I'm happy that you are celebrating this. As I said, we started this together and you have been very active in the upbringing of young women in STEM, in the engineering profession. And I wish you luck. I wish you many more years of good health so that you can continue your service to the engineering profession. And your sister there, Idi Atamusu, that started with you. I'm happy that you are all here 
we all uh, started this together. Six of us started, as I said, we had our ups and downs, disagreements and so on, as can be expected, but we are happy that in the end, the association has taken root and is moving from strength to strength. So I think I'd like to stop here. Congratulations to all our current members. And I'd like to say welcome to all our guests and thanks for participating in this important event. Good luck and have a good day. Thank you very much, Ma. We appreciate and celebrate you always. I'd like to recognize the founder for good governance, Dr. Upa Iro Upa. He also sends a goodwill message, says from the League for Good Governance, we congratulate Apwen for organizing this program. We also congratulate engineer Nkechi Isigwe, whose contribution to engineering is being again recognized. We at LFGG are very proud of her being one of us. That's from Dr. Upai Uro Upai, founder of LFGG. The chairman of ECOT Equine NSC, he also celebrates Apwen and engineer Inkechi as the engineering family honors her with another annual lecture. That's from engineer Uduak Essien, chairman of ECOT Equine branch. I'd like to call on the sister of engineer Inkechi Isigwe. She's here physically with us to come do a goodwill message. Yes, she is close to you, but you also have to share in her joy today. I'd like to call on Pastor Alauma Isigwe as you come to do a one to two minute goodwill message. Thank you very much. I say good afternoon to each one of us in the house this afternoon. I am grateful to God for another opportunity for my sister to be honored again this third year. We give God all the praise that we are alive to witness this. And I say thank you to the family, the engineering family, especially the women engineers. I know that she still has more years to affect not just the family, but the entire nation and the engineering family in particular. And I say thank you. And I say thank you to the Lord that gave her to us as a sister. She has been a blessing and I know she will continue to be a blessing. And I know age. Sometimes we think age can limit us to what we will become but it does not really work that way. So I say that her better days are still ahead of her. And the better things she will do are still ahead. And I know that the Lord will help her to accomplish more than she has accomplished. Thank you for coming. Thank you very much, Ma. She was caught by surprise. But you will know that from the abundance of her heart, she was able to deliver and wish her well. That's the richness in family. Thank you very much for standing by her and for wishing her well. I'd like to call on engineer Fine Ogolo, a fellow of the Nigerian Society of Engineers, former executive secretary of NSC, is online. Sir, please unmute yourself and give a one to two minute goodwill message. Thank you.
Thank you very much. The president of APUEN, all protocols observed. I want to rejoice with my sister, Engineer Nkechi Sigwe, on this wonderful honor being bestowed on her. Uh, during her birthday, I enjoy the messages that come to her when they call her super. She's actually super in all her and everything she does in her views and so on. She always goes for excellence. And I want to join and celebrate her to, to, today. Uh, I want to also congratulate Apuen, including the founding uh, president, engineer Mrs. Madoka. When she started, she mentioned the uh, ladies. I wanted to say she for, forgot that men were also here, but at the end, she thanked the guests. So I believe she believed that the main celebration is for ladies, but that uh, we are joining to celebrate with them. So that's wonderful. I rejoice with uh, all up when the founding president has already praised the sitting president of APUEN and the media past one. I've also been observing that they have been very active, whether it's the engineering forum, the political engineering forum, and so many other fora and platforms. They have been wonderful in promoting APUEN and even enlightening us that tomorrow is uh, the International Day of the Girl Child. They have been very active in all those. And um, also my having many daughters and all of them doing very well, I quite identify with you people in everything you are doing. I wish you well, and I wish my sister engineer Kechi Sigwe well. I wish her well in her wish for Nigeria, in her wish for the engineering family, in our belief in excellence, and that Nigeria can reach that uh, this thing. I thank her very much for her optimism. I also share her optimism that one day we shall be there. Thank you very much and congratulations. Thank you very much, sir. Those of us that are sitting here, we are applauding you for sharing some of the past experience you've had with her, which most of us didn't know. Thank you, thank you very much for that goodwill message. I'd like to recognize the engineer Laolu Adedapo Aishida, the finance, National Financial Secretary of APUEN. She's here physically, a fellow of the Nigerian Society of Engineers. Let me introduce you properly so that I can become a fellow. You're welcome, ma. please join us here. I'd like to call on Mr. Chigozie Isigwe, the younger brother of engineer Inkechi Isigwe, is online. Please unmute yourself and give us a goodwill message. Thank you. Mr. Chigozie Isigwe. While we're waiting for him to do that, I'd like to read another one from, another goodwill message from, allow me to call Stephen George, yes. The co-founder or founder of Rework Technologies, one of our lect guest lecturer that just delivered his lecture. He congratulates engineer Nkechi Isigwe and appreciates you for all your work in raising the younger generation. We are on need. We are working for a better nation, and we will continue the message. From all of us at Rework, we say thank you, Ma. So the younger generation knows that you're doing well and would also make you proud. Thank you. That's from Stephen George. Is Mr. Chigozie Isigwe, is he unmuted? Yes, you can speak, sir. Hello, thank you. 
everyone. Um, it's a pleasure to join you and I congratulate you. This is the third series in the lecture. Um, I use this occasion to wish all women engineers um, very well and um, urge you to keep doing what you're doing. Uh, they said is that if you, are, if you are asked to keep doing what you're doing, it means that what you're doing is right. So I urge you to keep what, doing what you're doing. And it's a, a blessing to have Nkechi Sigwe as my elder sister. And so I wish you people very well and uh, wish you um, good endeavors in your effort in improving the lot of women in Nigeria. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, sir. So thank you, there is the, in the rule, in the world of public speaking, you spent, I think one minute or less than, thank you for helping us to manage and conserve our time. Thank you very much. I'd like to call on, because he's it's physically here and is an old colleague of engineer Nkechi Isigwe, Mr. Dala, please, for your one minute goodwill message, to engineer Nkechi Isigwe, FNSC. You're welcome, sir. With thanks to God, I will say I'm privileged to be here today to witness this occasion on which uh, I'll call her my sister, uh, senior in the uh, working place while we were still there. Uh, she has been an indefatigable person, very pushy, and uh, I wish her well in her endeavors. And for her to see the success of what she has been working towards for Nigeria, while she's still alive. May God grant you success in all your endeavors, in Jesus' name. Thank you very much. That is also a one minute or less than. Thank you for helping us to conserve the time. In Toastmasters, they will say you are eligible to be voted for, for adhering to time. I'd like to call on Engineer Idiat Amusu, FNSC, fourth president of APWEN. And she's, I'm going to call her because she's, as, aside from Engineer Nkechi, she's the only past president, the experienced president that is here. So, Ma, please, on behalf of all the presidents Appoint has had, please come deliver a goodwill message. Good afternoon, all. Uh, today, we are marking the third in the series of lecture in honor of Nkechi Isigwe. Uh, it gives me a great pleasure to be part of the celebration. Nkechi and I were classmates at Unsuka, and we were there till we graduated together. And since then, we have been in contact more and more now that we have a forum called the Association of Women Engineers in Nigeria together. I want to say I am really pleased and happy that she's been celebrated today and it will go on for quite a long time. The celebration is more in honor of the girl child, which we all believe should progress and develop into a full grown woman who will study science, engineering, and mathematics in Nigeria and beyond. 
thank you for the Association of Professional Women Engineers for providing this platform where we have, we, where we have been encouraging the girl child into the study of STEM subjects. Thank you for celebrating in Kechif. Thank you all for attending this occasion. Thank you very much. Okay, so she's asked me, am I timely? Next time I would have a, something to motivate everyone that is timely. I'm sure it will make all our speakers timely. Yes, you are timely. Thank you very much. But, okay, so I got a message again. Some people would not allow us to rest. Everybody wants to send their message. The chat room is booming, is giving out, is emitting so much energy that I wish we can convert it to power. I believe it will help our nation. So allow me, Ma, my president, to call on the eighth president, engineer, Dr. Patricia Okwene Odili, FNSC, the eighth president of APWEN, board of trustee member, Nigerian Society of Engineers, as she gives a one to two minute goodwill message. Please unmute her. Good afternoon, everybody. And thank you for inviting me to give this goodwill message. Uh, Auntie, Nkechi, thank you for being there for all of us. Thank you all for the platform called Appoint. This platform had enabled a lot of us to express ourselves, to continue to fight for the betterment of the girl child and to continue to help the girl child stand tall in the society. And to Kichi, you've been a wonderful support to me and to Apwen and to the Nigerian Society of Engineers. You are a great resource. I thank you, Apwen, for recognizing this woman in her lifetime. God bless you all. All right, thank you very much. You know, as a mentee, you can give feedback to your mentor. So in the capacity of a mentee, I'm trying to give a feedback to my mentor, engineer Dr. Patricia Okwene Hodili, that you eat the, you made the one to two minutes mark. Thank you, Ma, for helping us to conserve our time. So we'll go to, if my president's approved, we'll go into the cutting of, oh, okay. You know, I told you, there is another goodwill message here. If you approve, Ma, I'd like to call on engineer Beatrice Oduni to do a one to two minutes goodwill message. She joined us right from the beginning of the meeting. I remember calling her while setting the protocol of this event. Engineer Beatrice Oduni FNSC, She's a founding member of APWEN, one of the six women that started and championed this catalyst moving group. Please unmute her to speak. Good afternoon, everybody. Um, <laughs> I wasn't really prepared for this, but uh, I, I have been a little bit indisposed, so I'm not in a mood to put on the video. So just hear my voice. Um, Kechi, I don't know how to appreciate you because um, Kechi has been a motivator a mentor, an influencer in my life because I met her in the university. As uh, the pioneers, India, there were four of them, four women, but she has been consistently constant in Upwin and pulling all of us. And uh, as reluctant as some of us would be, she will call and call and call. And um, 
of course, sometimes when your mother is calling you uh, reluctantly, sometimes you just answer. And then from there, I will tell you that she has been really, really there for all of us. And I have seen it even in Upwen. Sister Enke, thank you so much for what, who you have been in our life. Yourself uh, and our founding mother, Mrs. Maduka, I can't forget you. I really appreciate how much you have pulled many of us to where we are. I cannot write anything about myself without mentioning you, two of you. And it's a great pleasure to be with you in this forum. I thank Upwen for also creating this opportunity for us to appreciate you. May God continue to keep you in strength and bless you even more. Thank you all for being here. God bless you all. Thank you very much. There's a feedback from you here, Engineer Beatrice Oduni, FNSE, Upwind founding member, that you have done the vote of thanks. You just delivered the vote of thanks for this event. So you are being applauded by everyone sitting here physically, even when you told us you are not prepared. That's to tell you that there are some skills that are inherent in you. Once you have it, you have it. And as you keep engaging and doing it, you get better at it. Thank you very much, Ma, for that goodwill message. My president, all other past presidents here, they are sending messages. I don't know if uh, after today, they might tell me that uh, you need to check your position in Hapoin again for not calling them. So, Mom Kechi, all your co-presidents, they are all sending their messages. And I don't know if we're able to take all of them, if we have time to do that. I'd like to, <laughs> okay, I'd like to, with the approval of my president, call on engineer Dr. Felicia Unena Agubata, a fellow of the Nigerian Society of Men, a fellow of the Nigerian Society of Engineers, the immediate past president of Association of Professional Women Engineers of Nigeria, I'm a member of the Korean Council. Yes, I think I did this right this time around. And another thing is during our tenure, we started this annual lecture. I'd like to call her to do a one to two minute goodwill message. Please unmute her. Thank you. Good afternoon, my president. My founders. Apoem founders, past president, especially my mommy, mommy Nkechi Isigwe. I'm so happy. I want to say congratulations to Apoem, especially to the president for holding this event despite the COVID pandemic. And to mommy, you've been an inspiration to all of us in Apoem, motivation in chief. Whatever we've achieved, you've been so instrumental to it. You believe so much in capacity building. You believe so much in encouraging the younger ones. She believes so much in gender equality. She is a total woman. I celebrate you today, now and always. May God keep you in good health to continue what you are doing for the girl child, engineering profession, and humanity at large. I'll say congratulations once more, ma. Thank you. Thank you very much, ma. There's another round of applause for you here from those that are physically here. Thank you for helping us with that one to two minutes, Mark. You know I'm your mentee. I can give another feedback. So we'll go into the cutting of the cake. I'd like to call on the celebrants. We have my president here. We have everyone on the eye table. The celebrants. Yes, I know it was May. Due to COVID, we couldn't do that in May. But you know what technology has done to us? It has developed our capacity to do all we intend to do.
All right. <laughs> Even though it's not her birthday date, we will still do the one, two, three, go. So she can cut the cake, the birthday cake. So at the count of three, Engineer Inkechi Isigwe, FNSC, please go ahead and cut your cake. One, two, three. Congratulations. For she's a jolly good fellow. For she's a jolly good fellow. For she's a jolly good fellow. And so says all of us. And so says all of us, hooray. And so says all of us, hooray. For she's a jolly good fellow. For she's a jolly good fellow. For she's a jolly good fellow. And so says all of us. Congratulations, man. I hope this music I just did now, I can wax more. Engineer Kadri, please join. Ah. Engineer Laulu. All right, can we have, yes, Pastor Aloma, Unoma. Yes, and our friend. <laughs> we'll take the two, the jolly friends. All right, our, our family, please let let our family, yes, our sisters, yes. Okay. Mr. Bala, please, you, yes, I will need you up here. And our guest lecturer, your duty is not over. You are here representing the other two. Okay, so you can join her. A former colleague. Our guest speaker. You can join. Thank you very much. And please come up. Mrs. Zungozi. Yes, please come. Yes.
thank you very much. We'll take response and remark from the honoree. We'll take a response from her. Thereafter, the presidents will present a certificate to all our guest lecturers. Yes, we'll take a response from the celebrants. Then our president will present certificate. You know, I'm very bad at uh, observing uh, the correct protocols. But uh, the president of the Nigerian Society of Engineers and chairman of this occasion, and uh, like he always says, that he's my son. I appreciate you. The president of Association of Professional Women Engineers. Fumi Ojelade, the ESCO members that are here, and especially the publicity secretary, my daughter, Bosse. Let me stand on the existing uh, protocols. I wish to thank everybody who has in one way or the other contributed to the success of this outing. I'm sure nobody will believe that uh, the planning really started just last week. And you can imagine how much the chairman did. But, but like somebody asked me when they said that she's the chairman, I said that uh, in Upwen, amongst all the presidents of Upwen. I'm not sure that anybody has enjoyed as much as I did when I was the president. Because this particular chairman ensured that every month there was an occasion that uh, I had to enjoy in. She will call me promptly. And uh, before you know it, bands have been called to, and you know how bands are, to do praise singing and the rest of it. I want to thank her especially, Fumi Laya, Kadri. The guest lecturers, I want to thank them specifically and specially because they are young people and they are doing so well in what they are doing. And that was why I wanted them to share their experience so that younger people will benefit from what they have done and are still doing. So I say, thank you so much. And thank you for those who had to wait through the traffic. I hear that people had to spend about four hours on the road coming from mainland. Thank you all. I haven't finished, don't clap. You know, I, I met my classmates. It's not been easy. The first time we met was in 1972. 
and we graduated in 1977. And we are from the opposite sides of Nigeria. And we have been friends since then. When this thing is held in Omoa here, believe you me, she's always there. She has always protected my back. When I remember her, I know that I'm safe. Thank you so much, Idiot Amusu. And thank you, everybody, for coming. God bless you. Thank you very much, Ma. In Brooklyn, they will say the one that sweet my belly. That's the one that I love about it is when someone with a kind of pedigree calls you a daughter openly, not just because she gave birth to you, not because you are from the same whom I hear. You are from East. She's from East. I'm from West. But because she believes you've done what enables you to be called a daughter. I don't take this lightly. I appreciate you. Thank you very much, Ma, for deeming it free to call me a daughter of yours. I'll quickly say this. At the just concluded appointment conference, I was extemporaneously put in to be the chair of a technical session. And I was surprised seeing her join the session. It was something on renewable energy. And I was like, this is the second president. What is this mama doing here? She didn't just join to listen. She was actively involved. And something struck me from one of her comments. I know she will remember. She listened to a presentation by a fresh graduate that has just graduated, I think, less than five years or thereabouts. She listened. She didn't only listen to when she gave a feedback. She appreciated the young girl. If I wish I, I was that girl because that has boosted my morale. Not only that, she now said 38 years ago when she was working on something on renewable energy, she believed that it will work. When it will work, she does not know. That's to tell you that she's been consistently constant in changing the strategy and the vision of engineering. Thank you for your contribution always. On that note, I'd like to call on our president, engineer Fumilola Ojelade FNSC, as she does the presentation of our award to our guest lecturers. Thank you. Thank you, engineer Bosede. I would like to start with the people online before I go to um, engineer Austin Duru, who is uh, right here with us. This award, we call it the Social Responsibility Award because we believe they have fulfilled some social responsibility by giving us um, these wonderful lectures. So this first one goes to Onengi Yeofori, Stephen George, for an excellent presentation on capacity building at the third Nkechi Sigwe annual lecture. Congratulations, uh, Mr. Onengi Yeofori. Thank you for uh, the lecture you have given us. The next one goes to engineer Chioma Okolichima for an excellent presentation on capacity building at the third Nkechi Sigwe annual lecture. I will now go to the pupils and present. I'd like to invite engineer Austin Duru. If the celebrant doesn't mind, I would like her to please come and stand here with me, Ma. And her dear friend, 
Mengine haiti hata musu. So this Social Responsibility Award goes to Engineer Austin Duru for an excellent presentation on capacity building at the third edition of the Nkechi Isigwe Annual Lecture. Congratulations. Yes, we will soon close. <laughs> so, the Chairman Planning Committee, I'm sure she would be, please get ready in two minutes or thereabouts, you will be giving the vote of thanks as we close this event. Allow me to recognize, I can see engineer Joshua Adioye, a fellow of the Nigerian Society of Engineers, is here with us online. Engineer Margaret Oguntala, FNSC, a two-time past vice president of the Nigerian Society of Engineers, a council member of NSC. We appreciate you. You're welcome. Thank you for joining us. And for every member of Appoint NSC that has been part of this event from beginning to an end, we recognize you. We appreciate you. I can see our National Technical Secretary, Engineer Dr. Imade Opopuje, we recognize you. On that note, I'd like to call on Engineer Fumilayo Kadri, FNSC, one of the six founding members of this great association, the Chairman Planning Committee of Inkechi Isigwe Annual Lecture, as she delivers the vote of thanks for this event. The chairman of the occasion, Engineer Babagana Mohammed FNSC, president of the Nigerian Society of Engineers, and the host of today's event, Engineer Fumila Lola Ojelade, and the honoree, my friend, my sister, Engineer Nkechi Isigwe, Nkechi Nyere Isigwe. FNSC and all other protocols observed. It is my pleasure and privilege to appreciate all our guest speakers and all who have been a part of this occasion. I also want to appreciate your contributions and passion and kind. I want to appreciate the members of the committee for this event, who gave their support. And I'm praying that your kindness will reap abundant harvests in the mighty name of Jesus. God bless you. Chi goziegi. Alaya arbarka cheku. God bless you. Thank you for being a part of this event. Wow. <laughs> So she beat me to it. I was just putting my little Igbo together. I was just putting my little Igbo together so that I can use it to wrap up this event. But you know when you are the chairman planning committee, 
you always have the last card, the joker to end the game. That was a good one. So I give it to you, Ma, for doing that closing effectively. On that note, with the approval of the chairman of this event and the host of this event, engineer Fumilola Ojelade, FNSC, we bring this event to an end. We started with prayer and we're going to close with prayer. So we'll take the national anthem, first stanza. We'll take the second stanza as our closing prayer. Thank you very much for being a part of this event. We value your time. We appreciate you. Thank you for joining us to honor and celebrate a woman of timber and caliber, a woman that represents the vision of Hapwing to be the catalyst for advancements of women in the engineering profession towards national and global technological development. It's no other person than engineer in Kechinyere, Isigwe, FNSC. We congratulate you, ma. Thank you. On that note, can we have the national anthem? Thank you. Take the second stanza, O God of creation, direct our noble course, guide our leaders aright, help our youth the truth to know, in love and honesty to grow, and living just and truth, great lofty eyes attain to build a nation where peace and justice reign. Amen. Once again, thank you very much. You know, if it's a physical party, Thank you. We've drawn the curtain of the event to a close. But if it's a physical party, there will be party after party where you snap pictures and we take pictures and we felicitate with one another.